Greetings, dear, beautiful, sweet, precious soul that you are. See, am I acknowledging who you really are? Beyond our, what would you say, stories, narratives, beyond our memories, beyond the past, the future, but the power is right there, right where you are right now. My topic, getting over embarrassing moments. Maybe we've all, I, at least I've had a lot of embarrassing moments, so I can only talk for myself. And I find that so many of my embarrassing moments really had to do with following someone else, doing what someone else wanted to do that did not feel right for me, uh, but yet I was in a situation, like sometimes it's your boss, sometimes it's a mate, could be a family member, could be a mean, aggressive person, could be, you know, in some situation where you do something that you are embarrassed about, you regret, you wish you hadn't done, of course, but yet you did. And what happens to then, you've got the thing called gossip to and other people share your embarrassing moments. And oftentimes people that see you that way instead of really knowing who you are or what's really going on or the situation. And then we've got these embarrassing moments. And um, uh, many years ago, I have to tell you one that's really embarrassing. I was living up in Washington and I, a friend of mine was there, and she was a, a therapist, as well as my being a spiritual therapist. And she, um, we had done a lot of breath work, a lot of breath work. And, and also she was healing a lot of her birth situations. I guess she had a lot of birth trauma and uh, difficulty, you know, in those, th th when she first arrived. So anyway... We were so I got we were in the hot tub outside and it was a hot tub it was a, a wooden hot tub so it was and it was outside out in the woods up in the Pacific Northwest so she asked would I hold her on my lap in the hot tub and uh, feed her a baby bottle with you know water or milk well, I don't know what she put in it because she wanted to get all over some feelings that she has as a, well, so I said, oh, okay, so it was fine, I'm a therapist. So we're sitting in the hot tub and I'm feeding the baby bottle. So up comes the road on a tractor, because uh, I had a driveway, it was about a quarter of a mile long, dirt road, and here comes the neighbor, the redneck neighbor, on the old tractor and drives up and sees me feeding a woman with the baby bottle and we're in the hot tub and it was like, how do you ever explain that? I don't think I could go back to that town again because I'm sure it was everywhere and it was like, oh my. So it was like, it was a circumstance, you know? And it was, and you don't expect somebody to drive up, you know, on a, a redneck on a tractor and what are you going to say? So anyway, I bet we have lots of those. <laughs> that, that was a really embarrassing moment. But we have a lot of embarrassing moments that I'm thinking of Oh, different times, and usually in relationship with uh, different men in my life, you know, husbands and such, and where, what would you say, we get it put in so a lot of situations. Um, it also, a lot of embarrassing moments, really had nothing to do with us, but it had to do with other people perceiving what we were doing, but it wasn't something we were really doing. Like very competitive people, if you're sharing something, they will think that you're competing with them because in their mind they're competing all the time. And they have to be better, they have to be good, and they, um, so their perception of you or what's going on really has nothing at all to do with you or actually what really was going on. And so oftentimes people never ask or they never question or they never do that or find out. And a lot of times it's not really even our business. There was one time in the early days as my ministry and it was in La Jolla. I think it was one of my first uh, maybe uh, uh, holiday talks or something like that. And so I said, you know, I'm going to say something right now that maybe some of you don't like. And um, so as I said that, there was a man sitting in the front row got up, walked down the middle aisle, and left the church. 
well, we all watched and I was like, oh my gosh, he really didn't like it. And, and, and then other people, you know, they've got their minds like, what's wrong with him? What went on? I guess he didn't like it. Everybody's got a story in their mind. So then the second service, he's sitting in the front row in the same seat again. <laughs> and he says to me before the service, you know, he said, I was so hungry. My stomach was growling and making so much noise. I had to get up and leave the service to go out and eat breakfast. Well, that shifted me so much to realize I really don't know what's going on with others. But what I do know is that the mind is dangerous. It is the greatest terrorist weapon ever invented. And it is an invention because you don't need that sort of thing. It's a device. It's kind of like you might call it an app that goes along with this particular manifestation that we are involved in. And yet that mind and if, if you if you watch it and you notice what these where these thoughts are coming from and so many of the thoughts are nasty they're horrible they're telling people off they're destroying people they're causing pain or suffering to themselves and others and you go this is not us when i say hello spirit soul beautiful being that you are that's really who you are. It's not about bragging it. It's not about because every every living entity is, and you know, like they'll say in some teaching, you're not special. Yes, you are. Every person is special. You're not more special than another special being, but it's almost like that we all are the only child of divine, our divine source, our partners, our beloved. You might call it the supreme, and. But it's always like we're each a, a, the only child because we each have our divine with us. And people then perceive even the source or the divine and we, like the word God has been so trashed and it's dog backwards and it's all, but you know, dogs are nice, God. I mean, it's like, these are just words and these words have meanings. And then what people believe the meanings and they think that that's true and that's the way it is, they act from that. And they allow those thoughts and of those embarrassing moments or those thoughts of mistakes or those thoughts of what I could have, should have, or would have so terrorize them. Um, and I know my own, my own daughter, when she was passing a little bit before leaving this world, um, she said, Mama, some really horrible things happened. And she was, had this guilt. And yet, I said, honey, I, d I don't want you to tell me exactly. I don't want any pictures in my mind. And I said, you know, in one way, I'm so glad you did all that. Because, you know, that does, does not make you happy. And she was really with people that she thought liked her. But they didn't really like her. They were abusing her. And that's why I'm so against the sex trafficking. And this, uh, you know, the, the pedophilia and... Uh, the abuse of, of, of children and, and these demoniac uh, uh, blood drinking, all of these things, you know, that, that some people are, are, are whatever they are, are involved in, and then hoodwink others to get into their situation because of some need inside that, well, I thought they liked me. I thought that, uh, and then, and wanting people to like us, and how, and doing things that later on we wish we couldn't, uh, didn't, or we couldn't, or we should, but you have to get this, at some level, I don't know, this sounds stupid, the devil made you do it. And what I'm talking about is the word devil, D-E, was a V, uh, D-E-V-I-L, -E backwards is lived, L-I-V-E-D. And so you can also see how the opposites uh, are operating in this duality world. And when you're living back opposite from who you are and what we're really about at our true divine nature, instead of um, mimicking stories, uh, sitcoms, uh, movies, books we've read, biographies, uh, all of these kind of things of telling of, of kind of who we are and what's possible most of them are complete lies you could almost 
you could see how much like huge internet or, or libraries we had before and all of it is so much of it is just story after story after story of believing and doing and ugliness and mean and cruelty and war and violence. We say, well, this is humanity and we have to get rid of humanity because it's a plague. No, we were taken over because we thought they liked us, you see. We thought that we had, it was even starting to think or to feel because in a sense, when you are naive, like a child, a baby, a small little child, so innocent and sweet, you see, and to get taken over, and the trusting of it, and how that abuse and how there's a, a programming thing that goes is to, to abuse and then to bring the person to you and then to hurt them and then love them and hurt them and love them. And what this does, and it fractures, you see, people. And you don't know how they got into it, even if they had a wonderful childhood at some level and then they start associating in another way or they're watching things or, or, or they get in with the crowd or something. I thought they liked me. But so how do we get over those moments and those times is to also realize that we have been living through our thoughts. We've been listening to the second voice that wants blood sacrifices, the killing and eating of animals, the killing and the eating and the blood of humans, the, the, the human resources of draining the, the power and the energy of the divine that you really are. And when we realize all of the other stuff that we've been through, and they've also been through, uh, you know, that we have, the real essence of who we are is just like distilled water. That water isn't polluted, the purity of it, but it gets mixed in with all other kinds of, of things. Uh, and then, then taking it in, you're not just taking the water, but everything else into the body. And, and it's not natural because the body isn't designed for that in the natural way. So to get over it is to realize that, yeah, we fell for all of it. We were educated through that in schools and a lot of religions and all the TV, you know, I'm telling and all of the movies and visuals and, and, uh, uh, whatever else, or the, the, the abuse as a child even. And, and all of this, it, it hacks the true divine nature of who we are because, and then how we stay focused is still living in the mind. I think this, I think that, I think this, I believe this, I believe that, blah, blah, blah. These are concepts. And what do you really know? And, 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 and where are you, it's right now, right here. That's all you got, that's what you got. You and your divine, you, and you are the only child. And your divine mother, father love you and give you all that you need and for, 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 to thrive of your entire being, now and eternally. That's who we really are. And to, do, to actually do that, we have to get that on those levels, that yeah, we have done things, we participated because we agreed, we chose, or we were forced to, or threatened to, or whatever it may be. But you have to get, that never really happened to you because you are pristine. And yet we've been fooled, hypnotized, lied to, cheated, you know, rewarded, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, a, we've been like a piece of clay in the hands of others. And how we take our power back is we have to, to let go of all of that stuff to realize, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. And every moment is a fresh beginning. And you are eternal. And you cannot die. The body, we call it death, but it doesn't even die. It just goes back into the soil. Just if you take a match and you there you see it and there you have the wood in the little match and little sulfur end on the end, strike it and it goes to a flame and then the flame goes out and you have smoke. That smoke go is going back into the carbon chain and what's left is the ash of the released solar energy that was in the, um, the match, you see. Nothing dies, you are eternal. 
And when you do that, you stay centered in yourself. And now trust yourself. And you go forth into your eternal experience of being in harmony with nature. And when you're in harmony with nature, the divinity, the balance, and you sit quietly and listen in nature, take yourself back. Take yourself back now. And uh, we start fresh today, in this moment, and in every moment. And honor that nature, and nature will reveal her secrets to you. And that you live abundantly every moment in the richness of the joy of your being in love with the divine. Yes.